Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Most games of D&D, or any other tabletop RPG, are great fun when you have great friends to play them with. Though, sometimes, when playing with new people, you run the risk of them being bat guys, murder hobos, or just flat-out creeps. Much like what happens in these next D&D horror stories. But first, some whimsy to farm them likes and prepare for these nightmare stories. Now that we got them wholesome levels up, let's get right into these stories. Engage DM ruins my first D&D experience. By Reddit user Lyra Trago. Creep alert. Mentions of sexual harassment. Hi there. I'll be calling the DM Alf, since that was what his rogue's name was. Keep in mind, this group had Alf, his fiance Luna, her character name, myself, and only one, sometimes two other players in total. This was a few years back, and I felt like posting this now, since I've seen the sort of post here. So, it was my first time playing the RPG as a whole. Luna was the nicest person ever. She even taught me how roles work and helped me form my character. I played Cassandra, a cleric with a fun personality that was originally in a traveling circus troupe. All our characters met during one of my circus shows, and we happened to find a job to infiltrate a cult nearby through a drunken night. The job was supposed to be trying to get into a cult to save paladins and clerics being taken against their will, and nobody knew why. It was really fun, and I even got comfortable enough to roleplay it all out. The issue started happening once we started our journey out of the town to find the cult. I get having your fiancé play and wanting to be nice to them, but he went over the top. In fact, any time a big prize or something awesome came up, he would make us fail the rolls so his fiancé could get whatever it was. The biggest example is there was a cult doctor we got to convert to our side that used magic to be able to give one person a set of wings that could give a character flight in certain situations. But I loved the bonus stats it gave towards stats, so I tried to roll for it. Luna and I both got natural 20s, and he decided instead of having us roll one more time, it went to her and I only got a small amount of silver instead. Now, loot wasn't the only issue through this campaign though. The DM, mainly only caring about Luna, made her the center of everything. Luna was kind of annoyed he did this too, but when she asked him to involve us more, he simply said, quote, But that wouldn't be fair to you. And note that all the NPCs literally were in love with Luna. I bit my tongue out of not wanting to seem jealous, but then the DM started to like me in a very creepy way after a while, because he liked how my character was. I didn't like him back, because I was best friends with Luna by this point, and he didn't outright say it, but it was in what he did. I didn't want to say anything without proof because of my friendship with Luna. One of the sessions about a few months in, Luna and the others went to get food. He grabbed my hand and told me, quote, What if I made the BBEG in love with your character, and she ends up being an ally with them? I pushed his hand away and said no, because Cass was a fun-loving, happy girl that wouldn't be able to hurt anyone, much less betray them. He started forcing Cass into a corner and made her seem more evil after that, but his own character also tried to make Cass marry his character, which I got out of by rolling a perfect natural 20. Luna got jealous, but thought of it as just a game. The day I stopped going was when he groped me at the table, trying to act out his character. I hated it, and Luna blew up at him about it. Eventually, they broke up after I left but the groping made me immediately so uncomfortable I felt like I didn't belong in the group. In the end, it made me scared to do any sorts of Dungeons & Dragon based stuff until around last year, when my now romantic partner started a game of his own with all our friends. I'm still scared to play though, and my role-playing confidence took a nosedive. Luna thankfully doesn't blame me for not attending their games after that, and the others felt too awkward to say anything to defend me since Alf had a very scary type of anger. Ah, 
the old story of the DM favoring their significant other over the rest of the party. Though, this one seemed to take a turn when the creepy DM set his sights on OP, and started coming on to her, even in front of his fiancée. I can understand getting into role-playing, but to bring that into the real world and touch someone to act out something out of the blue is just messed up, and should not be tolerated. No wonder OP decided to leave the game, and I'm not surprised to hear Luna left Alf. Hopefully, OP can get her role-playing confidence back now that she is in another game with her new partner. On to the next story. Drunken and Randy Player has to be forcibly carried home after destroying one shot. By Reddit user, Uncle Red Snow. This is the story of how my first time running a game for a full-sized group was nearly my last, all thanks to one nightmare of a player who couldn't keep their beer or their libido down. Like many in the hobby, I started role-playing during my first year at university, but had dreamed of running my own game for over a year beforehand, spending that time learning the rules for the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade. I'd been playing in a campaign in a similar system run by a friend of mine, who I'll call Dawn, and had started running some brief one-on-one -on -one sessions for them whenever we would end up crashing at my place after a big night. Very basic affairs, short little plot hooks, and chances to experiment with horror and narrative. Dawn had been really complimentary and supportive, helping me build up enough confidence to want to try running a full campaign. I thought it might be better to teach my future players the mechanics of the game beforehand, and so invited Dawn, their players, and a mutual friend of ours, who I will call John, to a throwaway one-shot. John was our only first-time player, and I felt a lot of pressure to show him a good time, so I spent several nights writing up stats and material so that it would all run smoothly. The players were a very diverse group, and we're all friends. There was no indication that this would soon turn into the worst session I could ever imagine. I didn't tell any of them besides Dawn what game we would be playing. I handed them custom character sheets that didn't say Vampire in huge letters at the top, unlike the regular ones. I told them to write their names on each sheet and then pass it to the player on the left of them. I then told them that they'd be playing as themselves, but as a bit of fun, everyone would have their stats assigned by the person beside them which they all really enjoyed. Once everyone's neighbors had finished allocating, they passed the sheets back and I gave people a chance to move things around if they thought things made more sense. Most people didn't change much, maybe moving a point or two from the athletics into computers, small changes like that. But the player John had filled in the stats for had other ideas. We'll call this player Brad. For those of you who don't know Vampire, Every stat is ranked from 0 to 5, with 5 being absolutely exemplary slash peak human performance. Brad had complained to John about having only been given a meager 3 in strength, immediately bumping this to a 5. He did this with his appearance stat as well. This was a little absurd to say the least. He insisted to all of us that his time playing on the University Quidditch team, yes, really, had made him extremely buff, and that he was... Like, the hottest person here, sorry. Which, nobody had the heart to challenge. I realize at this point that he has sunk two cans of alcoholic cider and is moving on to his beer. I tell him to slow down a little bit, and we get started. The plan for the session was simple. Our players, playing as themselves, albeit in a far darker version of our world, are enjoying a night out when they run afoul of a hungry pack of vampires, looking to use them as that night's entertainment. The vampires embrace them, turning them into fledgling creatures of the night, and set them to the task of taking out a rival pack, at which point the train would go off the rails, and I'd let the players decide whether they'd turn on their creators, do their bidding, or attempt to skip town. The session starts without a hitch. After a short while, the players get jumped, I finally pull out my copy of the core book. They all get excited at the reveal that they're playing vampires and get to roll on a table to see what type they are turned into. So far, so good. The party wakes up in a shallow grave and I have them roll to claw themselves out and control their hunger for blood. Brad rolls to do the former and succeeds by a huge margin. 
He's been rolling great all night, apparently. This is when John notices that he has tweaked his sheet, giving himself a 5 in Brawl and Athletics because, you know, Quidditch. We asked him to put his stats back to what they were, and he swears loudly at both of us, refusing to. John laughs us off and fixes it for him. It's at this point we realize Brad is very drunk. Despite the fact that we are only 40 minutes in, and everyone else is just very casually enjoying their drinks. I put his booze away from him and give my players a short break whilst I get him a glass of water. A lot of them go out to smoke or use the bathroom, so I come back to find Brad drinking a beer he's stolen off of me, which I also have to confiscate. Several of the players text me during the break asking if I'm alright, saying they're having fun but they are a bit worried about the state of our Quidditch god. I let them know that I'm still enjoying myself and that I'll be keeping more of an eye on him. We get back into the roleplay. About five minutes later, Brad rolls some absurd result again and we realize that not only has he re-increased his stats, but he's not even looking at the dice he's rolling, just shouting out whatever result he wants. We try to teach him how to roll properly, which takes a very long period of time, in which he starts hitting on John very heavily who is very clearly not into this, and more than a little embarrassed on Brad's behalf. John very politely tells Brad to cool it down, not wanting to make fun of his advances, whilst also badly wanting them to stop. We then have to confiscate another can of cider, at which point Brad starts swearing at all of us and throwing pencils around like a baby. Not wanting to waste the night of anyone else, I try and push on with the story. I just need another 10 minutes before we can really kick things off and hit our stride. Or so I think. Brad decides it's time to hit on me instead, if you can even call it that. Every time I open my mouth to try and narrate an NPC who's giving them the setup for this one shot, he yells, SEXY, at the top of his lungs. Just the word, nothing else. The first time he does it, Everyone is dumbstruck and looks around in confusion. I try and speak again. Sexy! He then starts making uncomfortable advances towards me and John at the same time, and keeps rolling his dice to make random checks he yells about over the top of our dialogue. I suddenly realize the full magnitude of the situation. The group tells Brad to shut up, and he swears at all of them a whole bunch more, so we decide to take a break again to get Brad more water and some food to try and sober him up enough to carry on. At this point, everyone is extremely frustrated, and we ask him if he's done or if he just wants to go home. He says he'll stop, and we manage to finish talking to the guy. I look at my watch and realize that what was meant to take 10 minutes is now taking closer to 40. At this point, nobody is having fun, least of all me, so I give the plot one last push and open the floor to the players, seeing if we can get back into the swing of things. I begin describing where we found ourselves, as well as the strange new alien hungers that are affecting our characters, and Brad yells, SEXY, again. I put the book down and stop the music. Before I can say it myself, Dawn and the others tell Brad it's time for him to leave. Brad starts throwing a hissy fit, saying that it's not fair and that he will behave himself, and John has the hilarious idea to tell him, Okay buddy, if you roll a critical success on this dice right now, we'll let you stay. Brad rolls a stinker, claims to have done it, but at this point, the whole table is checking his rolls. We discover he's too drunk to stand and have to carry Brad out of the building, down the stairs, and across the road to his house. Thankfully, he lived nearby, as he was beyond the legal limit to use his broomstick. After that, we all called it a night, and went home feeling pretty miserable. I was really disappointed, and didn't run again for months. Every time I tried to do a one-on-one -on -one with Dawn, or a small session with my friends, my usual extreme confidence turned to anxiety, and I couldn't string sentences together, despite their encouragement, and so I told them that I decided to give up on GMing. It was only after John told me that he was really interested in learning more about the world and signed up for my potential campaign that I was able to get myself over this mountain that Brad's display had put in front of me and try running for a large group once more. 
That vampire campaign ran regularly for two and a half years and came to a proper end with suitably world-ending stakes and drama. I couldn't have asked for a better end to John and Dawn's stories or my other players, who somehow gave me another chance after what we still refer to as the worst session ever. We still teased the idea of starting it again, but I'm happy with the memories I have. Five years on, and I'm now our permanent GM, and love every minute of it, and I'm much more cautious about booze at the table. As you can imagine, that was the last and only time I ran for Brad. Unsurprisingly, he turned out to have as much respect for people's consent away from the table as he did at it. When we found this out, I was lucky enough to be the one to tell him that none of our friends ever wanted to speak to him or see him ever again. And we never did. Having a few drinks while playing a tabletop RPG can be a fun thing to do with friends, and can also help loosen you up a bit. Though, like with anything, it's best doing it in moderation. Which it sounded like the rest of the group was doing. Though, Brad took it to the point of getting sloshed and embarrassing himself to the point of getting kicked out. It does sound like, however, that Brad had other issues, and the alcohol may have just brought that out into the light. Thankfully, OP was able to get past that session and rediscover their confidence to start GMing again for the group. Have you ever had someone who just got too inebriated during a session? If so, how did you handle the situation? Let's get on to the last story. The Creepiest DM I've Encountered By Reddit user Old Peculiar 1012 I'm sure we've all had a DM that kinda does something a little odd, and maybe just downright creepy. I had a good run of never encountering one, until I decided to join a Discord Communities campaign. Things seemed fine at first, because I knew all the people fairly well. I figured that they would let me invite my girlfriend. She would love to play because she's always wanted to but never could. So I asked, and they all approved and welcomed her. So, I made a Dampier Vampire Death Knight or something like that. My character was my first ever edgelord. I've never made one, so don't kill me, thank you. Anyway, he was dead. Very dead. As dead as a vampire, kind of dead. Remember this for later. Our first encounters were basic. Giant beetles, hyenas, and honey badgers. And then there was the harpies. He described them as, quote, The large, succulent, breasted harpies. We were all a little weirded out, but continued anyway. The group barely survived any of his encounters, and by this point, we were all basically downed and out. We weren't TPK'd, but he has a local town come save us, and we wake up there. Fast forward to the next session. I wake up in an alchemist's house. I can see the tools of the trade, and it would be beneficial to the group to learn alchemy. So I look around and find, quote, A woman with small breasts, but seemingly endless thighs. This is all in the Roll20 private messages. We go and do a quest for the town, and I do a personal quest for her, gathering some materials to try a special potion. Some wild magic type shit. We both create the potion, and she asks if I'm willing to test the potion. So I very hesitantly agree to do so. The potion makes me rapidly lose all of my hair, and I start dying, turning into more of a corpse, I guess. I don't know. After days of trying to find out how to cure it with other potions, the DM kind of forces me into a roleplay scene. Almost no control over my character outside of a yes or no, which was never listened to anyway. He made my PC and the NPC have, quote, hot and steamy sex, and would go into detail about it. Towards the climax of the scene, he basically turned her orgasm into light beams, telling me she's an angel and it cured me. I feel like a normal DM would have just made her cure me normally, if that's what was going to happen. I don't know. I fell out of this campaign basically right after, but my girlfriend stayed in. She's probably got more stories than me, seeing as she left me for him, but that's okay. Well, I guess that is one way to cure disease. Just bang an angel. Though, as a vampire, 
you think that he would burn up. And not in the passion of the lovemaking, if you could call it that. Also, sorry to hear about the girlfriend leaving you for him. Maybe he just has that same ability, and she likes the free healthcare. Have you ever experienced a player or DM that just brings in creepy energy in situations? If so, feel free to let us know in the comments. If you would like a doge to narrate your story in a video, be sure to post it in the comments below, on the channel subreddit, or even just at me on Twitter. As always, I appreciate all of you, and here is more lucky to bring the whimsy levels back up after those stories. I will see you guys next time.